Allen? Here. Commissioner Klicka? Here. Commissioner Osterhaus? Here. Commissioner Ashcraft? Here. Commissioner Brown? Here. And Chairman Eilert? Here. We do have a quorum present. Uh, we have one item on the consent agenda, which is a minutes of a previous meeting. Moving to the action agenda, item number two. Consider authorizing acceptance of the Alive and Well Communities Grant from the Healthcare Foundation of Greater Kansas City and approve the reclassification of mental health reserves in the amount of $150,000 to support trauma-informed care services in Johnson County. Mr. Fortney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tanner Fortney, Mental Health. This is a little bit different than most of the grants we receive, so I'll take a moment to explain it. Uh, the Alive and Well Foundation is a group that has works on what's called trauma-informed care, and I can get into details if you have specific questions about that, but it's a program basically that focuses on making people more aware of trauma for those with mental illnesses and vulnerable populations and how that affects treatment. And the, the Alive and Well group has worked on several successful uh, programs like this throughout various parts of the Midwest, particularly St. Louis. They have a very successful program there, and they're now wanting to expand and venture this service into the Johnson County and the, Can and the greater Kansas City area. So the <clears throat> Healthcare Foundation of Greater Kansas City is uh, offering to give them a $150,000 grant uh, to perform that service as an expand. However, because uh, Alive and Well has never been into the Kansas City marketplace and the Health Foundation is not really familiar with them or their services, they're a little reluctant to provide them with the direct funds. They want one of the community <coughs> partners that they currently work with, in this case mental health, to act as an oversight group where we would actually be receiving the $150,000 grant funding and then we would be responsible for the management of those funds and <clears throat> so this is a program that would uh, go until March of next year we would simply be acting as the management and reporting body for that funds as it's distributed and United Care would be responsible for using those funds there will be one um, individual that will be an employee of Alive and Well it will not be a county employee uh, but we will be paying out of those 150,000 funds for expenses associated with that position and then the idea is is that after this period the grant period ends in next spring the idea at that point would be if everything goes well and we have no reason to believe that it would not uh, they would be then on their own they would be moving out of the mental health office where they're currently going to, where they're going to be stationed and they would be performing this as a separate entity entirely and they would work directly with uh, the healthcare foundation so this is a cooperative effort with the uh, healthcare foundation and uh, mr. deweese is uh, has no problem with this relationship yes that's correct fashion. okay consent uh, yes. it's fine with me yeah. mr. Icecraft uh, yeah consent is fine um, mr. Courtney, the forty or fifty-four hundred dollars is that a is that a reasonable amount? Is that I mean, and where did that figure come up from? Uh, that was the figure that was brought by the uh, Healthcare Foundation. They had uh, looked at the grant expenses. They have it broken down, and that was what they offered uh, in order to compensate. We've looked at that amount based on the very very limited uh, overhead that would be associated with this position. That should be more than reasonable to cover any expenses. We won't be buying equipment, office supplies. Uh, we will purchase equipment on their behalf, but that will not come out of the 5400 That will come out okay. of the other grant funds. Thank you. All right. So noted. We'll go to consent. Next item. Item number three. Consider approving a memorandum of understanding with the City of Olathe to participate in the Johnson County Community Development Block Grant CDBG program for federal fiscal, fiscal years 2019 to 2021 and authorize the chairman of the board of county commissioners BOCC to execute <coughs> such memorandum consent miss Vicki Vicki Schmidt community D development part of human services this recertification process is completed every three years for Johnson County to continue to receive both CDG <coughs> and home funds it's in a manner that HUD issues a memo telling us what steps we must follow and then we work with legal to make sure we're fulfilling those commitments. Okay. Questions? Consent? Yes. So Consent noted. Next you. item. Item number, item number four. Resolution number 040-18. Consider City of Gardner application numbers PDP-18-03 and FDP-18-01 
a request for a preliminary and final development plan for a construction of Gardner Law Enforcement Justice Center at the southwest corner of University Drive and Moonlight Road, Gardner, Kansas. Mr. Leipzig. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jay Leipzig, the Planning Department. Uh, this item uh, was presented by the city of Gardner, Kansas. Uh, it was presented for the Airport Commission on May 23rd, 2018. It was uh, uh, recommended for approval by staff. Sorry, I'm getting my, my logistics confused here. My, uh, it was uh, presented by the city of Gardner on May 21st, 2018. Uh, staff also recommended approval of this item. The Airport Commission uh, uh, recommended approval of this item on May 23rd, 2018. This is for the uh, Gardner Law Enforcement Justice Center. Uh, and it, it's presented before you because it is within <coughs> a mile of the New Century Airport. Again, this preliminary final development plan, right? Yes, okay. that is correct, sir. Well, this is a uh, zoning item, so it will stay on action. Next item. Item number five, resolution number 039-18. Consider City of Olathe application number SU-16-02, renewal of a special use permit for an existing quarry and construction and demolition landfill, C&D, operation on about 240 acres at 23775 West 159th Street, Olathe, Kansas. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jay Leipzig, uh, this item was brought before you from the city of Olathe, uh, about 240 acres um, at 23775 West 159th Street. This is for a quarry that is, it's been there for a long time. Uh, this is a renewal of the conditional use permit to operate that quarry. Um, the, um, the city of Olathe recommended approval on April 17th. The airport commission recommended approval and no concerns on the project on May 23rd. Uh, the only thing that is somewhat unique about this is the city of Olathe is requesting that it be for a two-year term uh, in this is instance so it can be consistent with other another quarry that is near adjacent to this property uh, just to, for ease of logistical approvals. Um, and uh, this is before you because it is within one mile, one mile of the new Century Executive Airport or new Century Airport. Any questions? Uh, Mr. Brown. Just want to make a comment. Um, <clears throat> we have a member uh, with us <laughs> of our community here with us, Mr. Creasel, who is lives close to the quarry, and um, he contacted me via email yesterday with concerns um, relative to blasting and and some some components of this that are not necessarily germane to our jurisdiction or our authority. I just wanted to bring it to everyone's attention. I had contacted the city of Olathe and have uh, not received a reply yet from them, but I'm asking uh, them to uh, become somewhat involved in helping to see what they could do to alleviate Mr. Creasel's concerns. So uh, I, I realize that's not uh, germane to what we're here to, to approve and discuss. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Thank right. you. Very good. Well, hopefully that communication can occur. Uh, but this is a zoning item, so it will, will remain on action. Uh, next item. Item number six, consider approving the creation of a project account in the amount of $750,000 for infrastructure improvements at New Century Air Center to be funded by a transfer from the county's general fund reserve to the airport capital projects fund related to the sale of the fire station located at New Century. Mr. Otto. Aaron Otto with the County Manager's Office. This is just a follow-up motion to uh, what you've discussed in the last couple meetings, which would create a project account for the sale of the dollars uh, that relates to the fire station at New Century to be put into a separate project account and easily tracked. We received information. Part of that building was built with an FAA grant, and we were in con contact with the FAA about would we have to repay part of the grant, all of the grant, what would they, how do they take this since we're transferring the ownership of this building, hopefully soon, to fire district number one. And their response back was that if it's kept segregated in an interest bearing account that's used for uh, airfield projects at New Century, you do not have to repay any portion of the grant, which is great news for the airport. Potentially several hundred thousand dollars of great news. But so that's why we need to set up a project account to keep these funds segregated separate. You changed the interest rules last year, so we checked that box and this is one little bit of housekeeping cleanup that really helps put to rest and to bed the issue of the fire station at New Century. Yeah, we've had many discussions. The only question I have uh, is do we need to leave with 
the FAA involved and everybody else, should we leave this on action so there's a specific uh, reference of activity that we can refer to or? Pardon? It does not matter. All right. Well, I'd suggest consent, consent myself. Please. Consent. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Next item. <clears throat> item number seven. Consider authorizing Johnson County Developmental Supports, JCDS, to add one FTE to provide additional staff for the grant project known as Independence <coughs> Kansas and to authorize the reclassification of JCDS reserves in the amount of $33,597 for FY 2018. Matt. Chairman Eilert and commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. You've had a, a long day, so I'll try and be as brief as possible. I'm Matt Fletcher with JCDS, and um, this is a request to uh, authorize JCDS to reclassify reserves in the amount of $33,597 for fiscal year 2018 for the purpose of adding an additional FTE to our Independence Kansas uh, grant project. In 2016, uh, JCDS was one of 15 entities to receive um, an Independence Kansas grant from the Kansas Rehabilitation Services Department, which is a division of the Department of Children and Families. Our Independence Kansas grant project aims to assist uh, over 100 adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities gain meaningful employment within the community using a process very similar to what we've uh, put into place with our project search program. It's a work experience process that uh, is similar to the internships that we offer in Project Search that takes about uh, six months. It's a little more accelerated than our Project Search program. The target audience for our Independence Kansas grant project is a little different as well as it's a better fit for individuals who have, may have had no prior employment experience or who have maybe had unsuccessful experiences in the past in finding and, and maintaining employment in the community. And what we found so far through our independence grant is that this is a very good fit for a number of the individuals who previously only had the opportunity to experience work within JCDS's Elmore Center's workshop setting. Um, now, we weren't able to begin our independence grant project effort until 2017, even though we received the grant uh, in 2016 due to delays at the state level. But our staff really hit the ground running once they had the green light from the state. And to date, we have received 35 uh, referrals into the Independence Kansas grant project. Of those 35 referrals, we have placed 10 individuals in uh, jobs in the community already. And if you look at the individuals who have completed the six-month training cycle uh, that's a part of this effort, the placement rate is 75%. So this program, even though we're just at the beginning stages, is already achieving great success. In fact, um, we're not the only ones aware of that success. Kansas Rehabilitation Services has recognized the early successful efforts of this program and um, we've heard that more referrals will be on the way. The four staff that already are working on this project are currently at their combined maximum caseload size and, uh, and so that's why at this point in time we would like to add the fifth FTE that we initially included in our grant proposal for Independence Kansas. And, uh, and so that's what I'm here today to request is uh, for us to be able to use those grant funds that we've received to add that FTE. Now I will add that we'll most likely be back in front of you in 2019 to request uh, again, uh, the use of reserves for this uh, fifth FTP position for Independence Kansas, as this is not an item that was included in the 2019 budget. Um, that concludes the information that I have for you today. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And let me ask you this. Uh, I, I think Kent, the, the Commission has been fairly consistent on these grants. If the grant goes away, then the position goes away also. Is That's that correct. Right? Yes. Is that your understanding? That's my understanding. What is the possibility that the grant will go away? Uh, speculation, but... Uh the grant funds are continued uh, are, are slated to cease in 2021. The state of Kansas is currently working on uh, an enhanced reimbursement rate for the, these project sites. 
um, and they're collecting data from each project site um, as a part of that effort with a goal of having an enhanced rate in place when the grant funds cease. So we have our fingers crossed for the future of this grant. However, you're absolutely correct. Once the funds cease, if that reimbursement rate is not adequate, these positions would cease as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions? Consent? Consent? Yes. All right. So noted. Thank you. Uh, next item. Item number eight, consider authorizing the publication of a proposed budget for Johnson County government in the amount of to be determined for fiscal year 2019 and setting a public hearing on the proposed budget for Monday, July 30th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the board chambers. Mr. Newfeld. Scott Newfeld of the budget uh, office. Um, this is uh, the step in the process where the board formally directs staff to publish a maximum budget uh, that can then not be reduced at any point uh, through the remainder of the budget process. Um, state okay. law. Wait a minute, you said reduced. You mean increased? Cannot be. Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> I apologize. Um, I, 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 I didn't even realize when you caught me what I said. Um, uh, it, that cannot be increased uh, by any any fund and so at this point uh, as we've discussed with the board uh, we've gone through a budget process uh, where we've identified uh, approximately a quarter mil uh, a rollback from a constant mill levy however uh, because the state has not finalized their budget um, it is our intent to go ahead and publish a maximum budget uh, that is an, uh, tied to an estimated a constant mill levy for all three taxing districts. Uh, but the board has been fairly consistent that uh, uh, it's their intent to roll back at least a quarter mill in the county taxing district. We've also received direction that we plan to uh, look at the 0.75 mill capital funding for both parks and library that started a couple years ago and make an adjustment to that of approximately half the distance between the growth realized and 5% growth. Uh, and so those uh, calculations we will be developing. Uh, what I will tell the board uh, briefly is that um, uh, the appraiser has updated the real property and personal property numbers uh, and sent those uh, to the uh, Office of Records and, and Tax Administration. Uh, and that was a June 1st deadline. Um, and so those numbers uh, reflect the first round of appeals. Uh, in aggregate, none of those numbers are cause, any cause for alarm. I think that um, we will not have to make any uh, negative adjustments as a result of things. So right now, um, the uh, staff is currently reviewing the utility numbers, uh, which also come in in June from the state. And we are working with them so that uh, the certification date uh, for this round of information from uh, for county clerks across the state is June 15th. And so what we will be populating in the briefing sheet is our best estimate working with them and working with the appraiser's office uh, when we publish next Tuesday. So these numbers will be filled in on Tuesday um, for next Thursday's decision. And it'll be our best estimate of uh, the ad valorem that we realized in our constant budget. So that's what we're going to be working with. And then uh, our plan is that to include, uh, we will work uh, then uh, with, with both Paul and John uh, on uh, the estimated outcome of the next round of appeals as well as exemptions. Um, we do not have any huge exemptions like last year where we had a, a school, a high school uh, that we knew was going to go through the process, but we'll develop that and that will be uh, the amount in addition to 0.25 mils on the rollback. Uh, so that we can comfortably hit that hit that 0.25 target uh, when the tax roll is finalized uh, in October. So that's kind of where the process is. What we plan to do is to have those uh, updated estimated numbers for a, for the for the rollback the board's directed us uh, in the presentation for the public uh, at the public hearing at the end of July, and then obviously when we vote on the final budget in August. So um, right now. Um, these numbers will be updated uh, on Tuesday or published on Tuesday and that will be our best current estimate. And then uh, the intent though obviously is to honor the board's wishes to provide you know, that, that opportunity to roll back the mill levy 
and really the biggest outlier right now is that finalization of the state's budget. Okay. Well, again, uh, <clears throat> the importance of the decision next uh, next week is that we set a maximum. Not a minimum. Uh, not a minimum. <laughs> a maximum uh, and uh, for public hearing on uh, July 30. So it will remain on action. <coughs> Thank you. Anything else? No, sir. All right. That concludes our agenda review. We are adjourned, and we will, uh, as at 12.15, I think our 1.30 p.m. time period should still hold so we can uh, enjoy Mr. Clicka's treat. Yes. Thank Chairman, you, Commissioner. Chairman, it was set at 1. Do you want, do you want to do it later? Or do I you said 1.30 earlier. Okay. Yeah. Yes. He adjusted it. Thank you. Thank you.